Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and a brand new video. In this week's video, we will be making this modern and minimalistic style cabinet out of solid red oak. So I'll walk you through the process, show you what I did. We'll make plenty of mistakes and fix those mistakes along the way. But anyway, this video will showcase how I built this cabinet. If you're interested in this cabinet, check out the description for the dimensions as well as the tools I used. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, here is a look at the lumber that we will be using to build this cabinet. This is four quarter rough sawn red oak. For the entire build, I used right at about 30 board feet of this red oak. And the first thing I needed to do was to break it down in order to mill it up for the dimensions and the sizes I needed to make the panels of each piece of the cabinet. Typically the milling process will begin on the joiner, but we had two problems with these boards. The first being that they were wider than the bed of my joiner, so I needed to rip them down the middle. The second being that they were more crooked than your least favorite politician, so I needed to cross cut them into smaller pieces in order to make them more workable. So here's a quick look at what those boards look like after they're broken down and I'm keeping everything maybe an inch or two longer than I actually need it because once I have these panels put together I'll go back and then cut them to the final length. If you're not following along is what I'm trying to do with the panels here is all the boards laid out so you can see I've got a bottom and then one side which will make up the external shell of the cabinet. Our cabinet will obviously need a top, another side, and a middle shelf, and a back, so we need to break down some more boards and get everything ready for the milling process. We will mill all these boards up on three sides using the joiner and the planer. And once I had all the boards milled up, here's a quick look. So we have one side on the left, another side at the top, the bottom, and then that middle shelf. There will also be a back panel, but we'll worry about that a little later in the video. All four sides of the outer shell of the cabinet will be the same width, so I just ripped all the boards to similar dimensions on each panel. Then these panels can simply be glued up. After these are all dried and set up, I will be running them through the planer, so no need to use dominoes to get a perfect seam here. We just try to get it as close as we can. All of the other panels will be glued up in the exact same manner and because you already saw how we glued those panels up, now is a good time to mention that if you want to build this cabinet, I've actually included the dimensions of each of these panels down in the description. So if you are interested in that, be sure to check the description out. I've also listed a link to all of the tools you see in this video. So if you are curious about any of the tools I'm using, they are also in the description. As stated earlier, each of those panels will next be run through the planer to smooth out any of those uneven glue up surfaces, as well as ensure that all of the panels are consistent thickness. Once all of our panels are all cleaned up and surfaced from the planer, we can jump over to the table saw and using the cross cut sled cut all of our pieces to length. In similar fashion, we will also use the table saw to rip each of our panels to the same width. There are obviously multiple ways that cross-cutting each of these panels could be done, but I've found the most efficient method is to use the cross-cut sled rather than the miter saw or the track saw in order to cut them to the exact same length. And using that cross-cut sled is a great way to make sure that those side and top and bottom panels are not only cross-cut to the same length, but also cut completely square. With those main four panels completed, I needed to get started on the back panel. And here is a trick that you may have never seen before. So if you have a board that is split, you can open up that split with a screwdriver, put some glue in there, 
and then on the opposite side use a shot vac to pull that glue deeper down into the crack and simply glue that board right back together. Once that glue has set up, the crack will be completely invisible and that board is as good as new. And these two pieces here will become the back panel of the cabinet. So I glued those together and while those were drying, I needed to move over back to the main cabinet to figure out a way to assemble this thing. So I had a major internal debate with myself for the longest time on how to join these corners, whether I wanted to do a mitered corner or even try a waterfall with a continuous grain of each of the panels. But in the end, I just decided a regular butt joint connected with dominoes would look the best. Normally, I don't care much for the look of long grain up against end grain, but I'm trying to keep this cabinet as natural as possible, and I think that it actually ended up working pretty well with this look. So to line all of the panels up on that joint, I used dominoes on the bottom and the top, which worked very well. And then once I had all those dominoes in with a dry fit, it was back to working on that back panel. So the glue is dry at this point, and we are going to use the planer to cheat one more time and smooth all those panels out. But because this panel is so much wider, which will run the full height of the cabinet, I'll have to glue this together one more time. So this was the important seam because I couldn't run this through the planer. I really needed to take my time here and make sure that that panel glue up did in fact turn out completely flat. So this panel where it will set in the back side of the cabinet does cause some problems, that being with wood movement, which is caused by the grain running the opposite direction of the first four panels of the shell of the cabinet. And while those four pieces of the shell of the cabinet will be glued together, if we do glue that back panel in place, we are essentially just asking for this thing to crack and come apart over time. So instead, this back panel will be a floating panel, which will allow it to expand and contract freely, preventing any cracking or self-destruction of this cabinet over time. To keep that back panel in place, we first cut dados the width of the thickness of that panel on the side pieces, and then we are going to cut a stop dado on the top and the bottom piece, which is what I'm trying to set up here. So we approximate a few marks, crank the blade down, and then put the panel in place on those marks, crank the blade up, and then very slowly cut the dado out in the inside of the panel, but stopping short before we get to the complete end of the panel. Flip the panel over and we can see my target mark, which the dado blade came pretty close to. I was a little bit off on one side, but that is no problem because we can cut that out with the spiral bit on the palm router. Once the grooves are cleaned up with the router and finished off with the chisel, we can cut this back panel to the final dimensions we need. So I ripped it using the table saw and then unfortunately I couldn't get this on the crosscut sled because of how wide it was. So I just took my time using the track saw to make sure that everything was lined up square before making those cuts to the final length. My panel was actually a tiny bit too thick, so I put a chamfered edge on the end with the router to hopefully draw it into that slot, but it was still too thick, so I just ran it quickly through the drum sander to take a tiny bit of thickness off. After the dados were cut out on all four of the original panels, we can begin the assembly of this thing. So the dominoes and the sides and top and bottoms are all glued in place. However, we leave glue out of that dado seam on each piece. That way that back panel can float freely. Once all the pieces of the cabinet are put together, we can throw some clamps on the outside and just like that, in no time, we have a shell of this cabinet. So 
So with that top part shell of the cabinet finished and glued up, I needed to figure out a way to do the feet for this cabinet. And I knew that I wanted the feet to be a little bit different and kind of be a feature of this piece. I had some leftover scrap cut off pieces from a bed I built not too long ago. And since these pieces already had the angle cut on one side of them, I thought they would be perfect for what I was trying to go for here. So I found a piece that would work as the apron between the feet and using a cove bit in my palm router I detailed the edges on that. I usually don't use a cove bit but actually after doing that I thought it looked pretty cool so I might try to do that more often. Anyway the easiest way to attach those feet to the apron was just to use dominoes and the feet will bear almost all of the weight of the cabinets so no need to go too crazy with attaching those together and then before i assembled everything i used the eighth inch roundover bit once again in the palm router just to clean up all of those edges and get rid of any of the sharp corners So with the glue up of the feet and apron piece underway, I could focus my attention to that interior shelf. And since we glued up the interior shelf panel with the other panels earlier in the video, all we needed to do was to rip it to the proper width and then finally cross cut it to the proper length. Now this here is one of the reasons that you want to leave all the pieces a little bit longer because if they aren't the right dimension, you can always cut a little bit more off. However, if they are too small, you can't add anything back on. So we can pop that shelf in place, but the problem is we need to figure out a way to keep that shelf in place. Now, if I was doing this from scratch starting over, I would probably put a dado on the side pieces, but because I am winging this design, I failed to plan ahead and put that data groove in the side. So what I did instead was cut domino slots in the back panel. Then I could mark where those slots were on the shelf itself, cut the domino there as well, and then hope that everything would line up and that shelf would pop in place and be able to be held in the back at least by those dominoes. So if you are building this shelf for yourself and you're doing something similar, I would definitely recommend figuring out a way to put that shelf in first rather than after everything is all glued up. Regardless, that did work, so we will focus on the shelf a little later in the video, but for now let's go back to attaching these feet and the apron to the frame itself. So as we've seen in the video so far, this cabinet is obviously made out of solid wood panels, those being red oak. And the significance of that is that this cabinet is actually pretty heavy for the size that it is. And because the cabinet is so heavy, I wanted to make sure that the feet were permanently attached in place and there was absolutely no way that they would come off. So this step I did find to be a little tricky in order to attach them and allow for wood movement if there happens to be wood movement across the width of this, but I decided to attach the feet and those aprons just using dominoes in the feet. Now I thought about using Z-clips or some type of fastener, but I just wasn't sure that the Z-clips would be strong enough in case this cabinet is pushed or scooted across the floor that there wouldn't be so much pressure due to the weight that it ends up bowing. So that's why I decided to glue the dominoes in place. While this did take a little bit of extra precision and time, I think it would be a whole lot worse if the recipient of this cabinet sends me a message saying, hey man, um, the feet of this kind of broke off, what's up with that? But because all of these feet are glued in place with two dominoes, I can guarantee with 100% certainty that there will be no breaking off of the feet, at least on this cabinet.
Anyway, at this point, our cabinet shell is done. Our feet and aprons are glued in place. The only thing we need to do is make some doors for this. So I first had to mill up some more lumber, which is done the exact same way as all of those previous panels in the video. So doors aren't much good without some type of handle or pull to add on the door. And I wanted to do something that would be a little bit different than what you normally see. So I grabbed a one inch oak dowel rod, cross cut it to length, and I wasn't sure if this would work on the planer, but I was able to feed it through the planer just to take off a little bit on one side. Next, I grabbed a scrap piece of oak that was maybe three quarters of an inch thick or so, and I ripped the edges off at a steep angle with the intent of making a keyhole slot style drawer pull. I completely made this up at random, so I don't know if this is actually a thing or so, but I thought it looked pretty cool after I had it attached. I will admit that if I was redoing this cabinet, I'm not sure that I would put these on there again. While I do think they are cool how they turned out and I think they complement the cabinet, I might try to figure out how to actually cut some type of drawer pull within the door itself rather than adding something onto the door. Before I could attach those handles to the drawers, I ran into a problem that being that the door had bowed some. Likely because it's made of the flat sawn oak, but also I actually got busy with a couple other things in between making the door panels and before I was able to actually attach them. So while they sat on top of my workbench and probably absorbed moisture from one side, there was a little bit of warp and I needed to figure out a way to flatten them back out. That way of flattening the door panels back out is done by cutting a dovetail groove inside of each of the panels across the grain, then taking a different oak board and cutting a dovetail tongue, pounding that tongue down into the groove, essentially forcing that panel to lay flat. This is actually the same kind of thing that's done with a C-channel on a bigger tabletop, but because these door panels were thinner, I wasn't able to fit a C-channel down in there. So the dovetail board is screwed in place on one side, which will keep it in place on that side. However, the other side where it is not attached in place will still allow for wood movement. After those dovetail pieces were put in place, we could move on to the handles. And I decided to put the handles on just using screws. That way there wouldn't be any accidental squeeze out that I missed from the glue, which would show through on the finish later on. At this point, this cabinet is starting to take shape. Before we put any finish or put the doors on, we want to go over and sand everything down, as well as hit all the corners and edges with an eighth inch roundover bit. I wanted the doors of this cabinet to set inside of the cabinet rather than an overlay on the front. So I'm using these slow close inset hinges and the slow close is really cool because you won't be able to slam that door. So if you'd happen to get one of your fingies or your paws in the way, no worry about getting it smashed by the door. Now, honestly, I'm not sure about what the easiest way to go about putting these doors on was, but what I did was put the cabinet on its side and I used a couple dominoes to space everything out. And once I had it lined up, they can just be screwed into place. And I found it helpful to first drill a starter hole before putting those screws in place. You may have noticed in that previous shot, the doors swing in a little too far than they need to. So we'll stop that by putting the shelf in place, which will be where those doors stop. I didn't know at the time, but these hinges actually come apart. So that would have made it way easier to take that shelf in and out. 
and the shelf will be supported in the back panel by those dominoes but on the side we'll be using these little shelf pins here just to hold everything in place and give that shelf some support we don't want to glue anything in place due to wood movement so the shelf will be loose at every point that it is attached So with both doors on, we get a first look at the cabinet and I really liked how it looked except that I hated how big the gap was in the middle. Now the hinges are adjustable so I could shorten the gap in the middle but then there would be a big gap on the other side of the door. So what I did instead was to over exaggerate that gap to make it as big as possible. Obviously now it's way too big so I just put a board right in the middle. While this could have entirely been prevented by either cutting those doors to the proper size or planning this cabinet out better, woodworking isn't necessarily as good as how you can do everything to a T as far as plans go, but rather instead how well you can fix those mistakes and look like it was supposed to happen. At least that's what I tell myself to make myself feel better or use as an excuse for when things don't work out perfectly. For the finish, I am using Rubio Monocoat Natural. I wanted to keep the collar of the finished cabinet as close to the original wood collar as possible, and I think this natural stain did a great job of that. If you're not familiar with Rubio, it is probably the easiest finish to use of all time. You just wipe it or buff it on into every spot, and then you'll go back shortly thereafter and wipe everything off. Aside from just looking great overall, Rubio is by far my preferred finish to use if I'm able to do so. Not only because it looks great, but also the ease of use. You don't even have to be careful whenever you're putting it on because you will go and wipe everything back off. It doesn't necessarily matter if that initial stain is sloppy. Normally this is the point in the video where I say everything came together really well and show some pictures. However, whenever I was putting the finish on, I had the doors off of this cabinet. And of course, at that point, I made the very unfortunate mistake of accidentally dropping one of the doors, which happened to bust both of the outside corners. And while I really liked the look before I put these brass corner connectors on, these were a very easy and quick fix for that busted corner. And I think that these made the cabinet look even better. The only other very last thing that I thought I would need to do was to put some of these bumper stickers on the shelf. That way when the doors shut, even though they were slow closed, there would be a nice soft cushion for them to hit whenever they shut. Then of course when the cabinet would otherwise be finished, I just got to looking at it and I thought something just didn't look right. I originally left these side apron pieces off due to wood movement, but without these I thought the cabinet looked incomplete. So I milled these up out of some scrap crosscut pieces and then just glued them into place with dominoes. So we clamp those new apron pieces in place and that would finish this build up. So here are a few pictures of this thing once it's finished up. Let me know what you think of the end result down in the comments, but personally I absolutely love how this cabinet turned out. I think the solid oak panels gave this thing an awesome look, and I really like how it came together as a minimalistic and modern style build. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and found the content useful. As always, thank you for watching. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of this cabinet or what you would have done differently. Of course, stay tuned for more, and I will see you in the next video.